represents all of humanity in righteousness Adam represents all of humanity in the fall in sin in death Jesus represents all of humanity in obedience in life in righteousness so the law of the spirit of life where in Christ Jesus has set me free from what the law of sin and death where is the law of sin and death in the first Adam all died and death by sin therefore all have sin so first Adam death sin failure woes on humanity second Adam second Adam life righteousness sanctification obedience the progenitor of the new kind of humanity that the planet never saw before the head of a race called the new creation man the man without a past only has a future the man without a generation only one generation away you are of god little children and have overcome them so you don't have a long list of generation it's just god and yourself whatsoever is born of god so your father is god you're not a grandchild you're a child because the genealogy is not long it's a short genealogy and when you look at god what is in god is what is in you why because of his own will begat he us by the word of truth that word word of truth is a sperma meaning sperm sperm means dna meaning the same dna in god is on your inside if he cannot fail i cannot fail why he gave back to me i share in his identity somebody shout i hear you so when a man begins to talk to you about generational cause is fraud he wants to milk your ignorance it's nothing like that for a believer nothing like that for a child of god you can't be born of god and be suffering from a generational cause from a human lineage the day you got born again you disconnected you are a chosen generation you are brought out of darkness into genealogy changed your father died of stroke you can't die of stroke what is operating inside you stroke cannot handle it download tana somebody shout i house eternal life no generational cause no ancestral cause blessed christ hath redeemed us from the cause not just redeemed for a, a moment of time but redeemed eternally redeemed forever somebody said but gideon went and pulled down the altar in his father's house gideon was not born again gideon lived under an inferior covenant with inferior promises gideon is not your model you are not gideon you are a new creation after the image of him that created him born after the image of him that created him not after the image of Gideon so look away from Gideon unto Jesus the author and the finisher of faith somebody shout I hear you yeah very important Ezekiel corrected Moses because it was Moses who introduced generational cause in Exodus chapter 20. He said, anybody that will worship idols, his iniquity shall be punished unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate God. It was Moses who brought it to be. Exodus chapter 20 is where you ever see the first word generational cause to the third and fourth generation. And under the same Old Testament, because revelation was progressive, when Ezekiel came on the scene, he said, no more shall this proverb be said in israel under the same old testament that 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 thing was rusticated no more shall ezekiel 18 no more shall this proverb be said in israel that the fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on age he said no as long as i live saith god that's the end of that nonsense from this day forward the soul that seen it it shall die jesus showed up and said that death i have tasted it on your behalf so now the gift of god is eternal life 
The law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. I'm free. How free? Free forever. Have you ever asked yourself, the same people that were given that curse in Exodus chapter 20, who didn't even obey God, that curse didn't even happen to them. The children of Israel were told, they were the ones told on their way to promised land, that if they worship other gods, it will be punished the third and fourth generation. But they were worshipping idols in the wilderness, and their children entered the promised land. Their children entered the promised land. None of their children were left behind. All of them entered. That means that cause was not in effect. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Lift your right hand and shout, no cause. Only blessings. I'm swimming in the blessings of righteousness. I have the blessedness of righteousness. My sins are forgiven. I have the blessing on my life. Listen carefully. The born again man is not an improvement on the first Adam. Not at all. The born again man is not a refurbishment of the first Adam. The born again man is not a renovation of the first Adam. That's why Christianity is not about morality. Oh, Adam was morally bankrupt. So now that you are born again, be morally, be morally rich. No. It's not about morality because you can be moral without Christ and you go to hell. So born again is not an upgrading of Adam. So since Adam fell short, let's upgrade him. Uh -uh. The born again man is not an upgrade of Adam. It's not an improvement on Adam. It's not an updated or updated Adam. Is it updated or updating? Which one? Uh, all of the above. Lift your right hand and shout. I'm not an updated version of Adam. Say, I'm not an improvement on Adam. I am not an improvement of the first Adam. I am not a renovation of the first Adam. I am not a refurbishment of the first Adam. I am not an upgrade of the first Adam. I am not an improvement of the first Adam. In the first Adam, all of us died. So in the second Adam, all are made alive. It is called new life. It is called born from above. The born again man, it has nothing to do with Adam. There's no connection. That's why you can't talk about generational cause. He doesn't know it. In fact, it's a strange vocabulary. He doesn't recognize what is generation. Which generation? I have only one generation. Royal priesthood. Why? Because I came from the family of the king of kings. I have no generation. Somebody said, but I'm feeling the symptoms. The symptoms that my father felt and my grandfather felt. Let's be real. My grandfather used to have this symptom that will make his eye not see for some time. Then after a while, the eye will see. My father had the same symptom. And my own eye has started having that. Now this is where the so-called deliverance experts take advantage of people. By describing your experiences. They thrive from outside. But the born again man is not an outward man. The born again man is inside out. He got on anger. Jibura nange, liboto roka, jekula tana. So this man says, my uncle, my grandfather had this sight condition. My father had this sight condition. It has started. My own, after a while, I will go blank. I can't see anything for five minutes. Then after some time, it will come back. That's how my father's own started till he couldn't see for days. 
Don't you think I need deliverance? No. Why? Satan is a big fool. Because he is a big fool and he is an ignoramus ignorant bully. What does he do? He keeps record of your natural family through a spirit called familiar spirit. He keeps data of what happens in your biological home to use it and create similar experience to give you a mentality that what started is still running. Now you also will have to have knowledge that is superior to that knowledge. It is called knowledge that passes knowledge. So when Satan throws that at you, it's called fiery darts. Fiery darts. When he throws those darts on your physical body, what do you do? Casting down imaginations bringing every thought we are under subjection to do what to obey christ where is christ in you who oh, the hope of glory am i teaching here so how do you bring it down it is written being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God. What corrupted my father cannot corrupt me. Your mother died of stroke. You cannot die of stroke. In your body is the blood of Jesus. The life of Jesus is flowing. The spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth where? In your mortal body. Therefore, it will quicken. By knowledge, zipatona gaga. The righteous through knowledge shall be delivered. By knowledge, you resist the devil, and what will happen? He will flee. It's not deliverance you need. It's knowledge that passeth knowledge. An inferior knowledge said, "What happened to your father is about to happen to you." Then you bring superior knowledge. Knowledge that passes knowledge. What is it called? Epignosis. Exact, accurate, precise knowledge. What is that? That the acknowledging, the communication of your faith may be effectual. How? By the acknowledging of what? Every good thing that is where? In you because you are where? In Christ. You don't acknowledge what happened to your father. You acknowledge what has happened to you in Christ. I'm teaching here. I'm teaching here. Your father was poor. Your uncle was poor. Your grandfather was poor. Your family is full of poor people. You are not in that family. I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the family were in heaven and on earth is named. I'm in a new family. I'm a member of the household of faith. Royalty is in my blood. And you cannot find a poor royalty. So my father died poor. I cannot die poor. I have the mind of Christ. I have the leading of the Holy Ghost. I have the DNA of God in me. I access the riches of grace. And by the riches of grace. And by the riches of grace. Zatola betena kaka. By the riches of grace, I have robust access to the treasures of this planet. It's not deliverance you need. It is knowledge. Exact knowledge. Don't acknowledge the pain. Acknowledge the provision of health. Don't acknowledge the bad dream. Acknowledge what Christ.
Christ has deposited his side. And based on that, judge that dream. Say, dream, stand there. How dare you? How dare you? Tell it you are a stupid suggestion. Get out of here. In my name, they shall cast out. So if devils come in form of dream, what do you do? Exactly. I prophesy to the first 500 of you whose amen will come like thunder. Every experience that is trying to tie you down to your biological family that is contrary to redemption, I flush it out. I flush it out. That symptom, that feeling, that pain, I command it flush out. Can I hear that amen with a holy madness in your voice? I decree over you today whatever has been responsible for the failure in your biological family expires its access to your life say i am dead my life is hid with christ we are can i hear you shout a good amen and i decree from this day your experiences will be the experiences of the redeemed the experiences of the righteous from this day whatever has not conformed to the obedience of christ by the finished work of christ i bring it under subjection under subjection under subjection under subjection and i speak over you reign in life reign in life enjoy the abundance of grace enjoy the gift of righteousness you are blessed you cannot be cursed if your amen is loudest you can never be cursed 